Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. We're uh, pleased to welcome Salman Rushdie as part of the Authors at Google program. Uh, Mr. Rushdie is here to talk about his latest novel, The Ench Enchantress of Florence. You know, since we now live in a time of, of extraordinary transformation and change, um, it just I encourage you to imagine what it must have felt like to live in that time when literally everything you thought you knew about the world you lived in turned out not to be true. And so this is a time not only of enormous artistic, musical, architectural uh, uh, brilliance and advance, but also a time of this remarkable existential shift. And along with that, there are great philosophical shifts going on. For instance, the High Renaissance is famously the period at which the idea of the individual self is first given value, the idea of the sovereign individual self, uh, of us as being masters of our own destiny and creators of our own fate and responsible for ourselves. That's to say, a, a significant shift in the balance between the individual and the community. You know, and and uh, in, in India, as in Europe, until th this period, the, the value of the self had been seen primarily as a part of a community. Um, and at this point, the philosophers of the Renaissance, uh, Pico della Mirandola and others, began to articulate the idea of the sovereignty of the individual. And even in India, uh, a place not, which is, was very different from Renaissance Europe in many ways, but even there, in the court of the Emperor Akbar, you had a kind of questioning of orthodoxy also going on. And, um, and Akbar, although he was clearly a believing Muslim, and, I, and unlike some of his contemporaries who thought that he had, that his level of skepticism was so great that he had lost his religion, I don't think, in fact, he ever did. But he was a kind of old-fashioned, um, or well, he was actually rather modern for that time. He was a pantheist uh, who believed essentially that all religions were the same religion and, and, and all ways of worshipping God were ways of worshipping the same entity. So I wanted to enter this world uh, and, and explore it, partly because I'm a historian by, by background and I had always been fascinated by, by this period and by these, these two very different worlds, which coexisted in time, but not really in any other way. They didn't really know each other. It never, for a long time, it never really occurred to me that they would be in the same book. It then struck me that this period, the period about in which this novel is set from the late 15th century to the middle of the 16th century, is really the period at which the East and the West, and certainly India and, and Europe, first engaged with each other. It was really the moment at which they first got to know each other at all. Um, you know, Vasco da Gama arrived in South India to begin the spice trade at the end of the 15th century. Uh, the Portuguese established their small colony in Goa um, at about the same sort of times. Um, and, um, um, and as far as I could find out, there wasn't a single instance that I could find of a journey in the opposite direction, of, a, of somebody from moving from India across the world um, into, the, into Western Europe. Um, so I decided that I would try and invent the journey that never happened, the journey from the East into the West. Um, and then I thought, well, if it was a woman, it would be even less likely that it happened. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's what the book's about. It's about this, this, this bringing together of the two worlds. I don't like to write books which have messages exactly. Because I, as a reader, I don't, I don't like to be told what to think. I, I feel that that's my business. And, and, but what I think is, is valuable to offer to readers is, is a world which makes them think. You know, which makes them to think about, about violence and peace and good. So if you would like to ask me anything, now is your chance. Or else I'll just leave. And I'm, I'm fascinated why there wasn't a return journey from India to the West. In the novel, there are these two kinds of, char two kinds of character in the book. There's one, one kind of character which, who feels defined by a journey. You know, in a way, they discover themselves by a journey that they make, a physical journey that they make. Um, travelers, you know, who really come to understand themselves and their world as a consequence of a journey. Um, and then there's another group of, of characters who feel the opposite way, who think, you know, why would you leave home? 
you know, why would you leave the place where, where, which you love and where everybody knows you and where your life makes sense? And then these successive waves of, of invaders and colonizers, you know, came in. So I guess the place was just filling up and there was enough, there was enough tourism to do without leaving home because people kept showing up from all over the place, you know. No, but I mean, I do think there was something in, there's something in the nature of, the, of India at that time that people really didn't seem to be curious about foreign travel. They were interested in trade. I mean, that's one of the exceptions that actually in the Mughal court, there were some very intrepid female entrepreneurs. I think it's really very largely to do with the fact that the, the knowledge level was so low um, that it didn't interest people that much because there wasn't en enough there to feed their imagination, if you like. You know, um, if you go 100 years later, it's different. You know, it's just this is the very, very beginning. And, and I wanted to talk about the very beginning very much for coming. I have yes. a quick comment and a question. One of the com a comment on a, a question that came was four or five questions ago, asking you about, you know, how how your work can be accessible to people from who aren't from India. Well, I, sp I speak as somebody who is not from India, mm. um, and uh, having read your work, some of your work, and have read Gabriel Garcia Marquez's, and not being from Colombia, and Faulkner, and not being from the American South, and mm. all of these other things, I, I want to say that I, I have the same reaction that you described uh, people in the Renaissance having to a new world. I think, mm -hmm. um, in, a, in, in large respect, you know, it's 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 sort of the opening of my eyes to something that I haven't seen before, and it makes me more interested. Yeah, thank you, in Colombia. Great. But uh, that was my comment. My question is, what you talked about in your talk, and I'm very much looking forward to reading your book, um, but I haven't yet. Uh, was the things that happened at the beginning of the Renaissance, and one of the things that I always associate with the beginning of the Renaissance, in addition to things like the the fall of the Byzantine Empire and, and things like that, is also an explosion in technology and science, and especially in media, with yeah. the invention of movable mechanical type. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, I think there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of re uh, resonance for us here and now today because of the explosion of the internet. But I'd very much like to see how you feel that came through it maybe in your book or, or if of course the great revolution as you say is the book you know uh, the, the revolution of this period is the book um, and people are able to read and it shapes their opinions because it can be disseminated en masse you know instead of the instead of books being produced in copies of one or two or three you know and kept in the libraries of great men um, books were suddenly available for people to read and this had an enormous effect on shaping thought because suddenly thought itself was available to everyone. And not just thought, but also, of course, this was the birth of satire because this is the beginning of pamphleteering, you know, so, um, which is kind of the blog of the 16th century. You know? <laughs> um, um, the, the fact that anybody, because I the, like the blog because almost always anonymous, you know, that the people could take on a name and sound off about whatever they felt like sounding off about and print it in a little four sheet thing and throw it around the city, you know, and then people would respond to it and, and it became, it's not unlike the, the present day phenomenon. Uh, people's reputations could be made and destroyed in this way and, and often were. Um, so yeah, it's a, you're right, it's, it's not, that's what I'm saying, it's, a, it's another time of very radical change, you know, uh, the, uh, and that, for me, was one of the attractions, in a way, of entering it, to see how human beings react to a time of radical change. You know, what, what does it do to us as people? Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you.